In this fix year Q&A, we'll compare a few wheel sets to see which one is worth your hard-earned money, talk about my thoughts on the Bianchi Pista, plus more coming up. What's up, I'm Zach Gallardo. Life is short, but don't make it shorter, so be sure to ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous. And subscribe to watch more fixed gear videos just like this one every Thursday and Saturday at 6 p.m. Pacific. What do you think about handlebar bags as opposed to front baskets? The main draw to handlebar bags is that they're really convenient to put on and take off, but because of that, they have a smaller carrying capacity and they won't be as stable as a front basket, which in turn gives them a lower impact on handling compared to a basket. Handlebar bags are best for your race bike or if you really can't care about saving weight. They're really good if you wanna take out your fast bike, but you need to go on a longer ride and need to take some small items with you, like additional tools, food, or a camera. Baskets, on the other hand, you can just throw in whatever you want and they have a higher carrying capacity. But because of that, you do have to commit to mounting hardware, which does impact the handling more. My walled front basket costs like 20 bucks, as opposed to a handlebar bag, which costs around 40 bucks and up. And for my purposes, the front basket is better. I can carry a bag of groceries in the front. I can throw in my small day bag in the front if I don't want to deal with back sweat or I could carry a 15 pound bag of rice. And so for me, front baskets are just better and I'll deal with the small impact that it has on handling. How does one get over the fear of locking up a nice bike at school or in a public place? A good rule of thumb is to spend at least 10% of your bike's value on locks and use at least, at least two good locks. For my locks, I use this really beefy Abyss Granite X Plus for the rear, and then for the front, I have this On Guard Bulldog that is significantly less beefy, and then for my saddle, just a combination cable lock. So if you're using three high quality locks and you're still paranoid about having your bike stolen, your bike is probably too nice and you should consider getting a bike that still rides nicely but isn't as expensive. Any bike can get stolen at any time, whether it's locked up, whether it's in your house or in the garage, whether you're even riding the dang bike, it can get stolen if somebody wants it. That's just a fact of riding a bike and to an extent all bikes are meant to be disposable. You're supposed to own the bike, not the other way around. Use at least two good locks. What do you think about the specs of the Bianchi Pista Steel? They're popular in Europe, they don't really see them much in the US. Well, the reason you don't really see them much in the US is because it's pretty expensive for what you can get here. The Bianchi Pista Steel here costs around $750, while it has the specs of a Kilo TT. Not even a Kilo TT Pro, just a regular Kilo TT, which costs $400. The Bianchi Pista Steel is a fine bike, but for the full price, nah. If you can get it used for around $400, seems like a good deal. What is your opinion on Golden Cycle's fixed gear bikes? Well, if you want to actually get into riding, just stay away from those $200-ish bikes. With bikes, you normally get what you pay for. Keep in mind, I've never ridden a Golden Cycle's bike, but it seems like the exact same bike as a lot of other bikes on the market. It's made out of high tensile steel, it has those deep rims, and it has identical components. So, because of that, it'll probably feel really sluggish, be really heavy, and the components will probably need a lot of maintaining to keep them in working order. In short, if you're going to be riding this thing every day, it's going to be a lot more hassle than it's worth. Now, this thing is fine if you just need a beater that you don't mind getting stolen, or if you're just doing short rides on the weekends in the spring. But if you want something every day, your best bet is to spend $400 to $500 on something that is more than twice as nice so you can really fall in love and enjoy cycling. Best places to find steals. Well, if you're the one stealing, anywhere you go could be a place to find a steal. Don't steal bikes, that's rude. These days, in my experience, the best place to find really good deals are swap meets, especially swap meets at velodromes. You could go to a swap meet elsewhere, but you're gonna have to hunt and scrounge around for usable parts for your track or fixed gear bike. Swap meets tend to be really good for deals because a lot of people there just want to get rid of their stuff, make some space in their home, and get some cash in the process. And because people just mostly wanna get rid of stuff, lower prices. Zach, looking to do some fierce fixed riding for some significant distance, 75 to 100 miles, particularly interested in fixed gear for the low maintenance and challenge. The bikes you have already reviewed seem more suitable for less arduous commuting and so forth. If you're going to buy a bike for conditioning and training, etc., on rural roads, what would you get and what would you upgrade? Keep it around $1,200. First of all, the entry-level bikes that I've reviewed 
they are more than capable of riding 75 to 100 miles. It's the rider, not the bike, that's doing the ride. Your gear only matters up to a point. As long as your bike is reliable enough and you're in good enough condition, you can ride 75 or 100 plus miles. But of course, a nicer bike will make that experience more enjoyable. So for around 1200 bucks, I would get a complete Wabi Classic, upgrade to the sub 15 wheels, and put on some 28C Gator skins, along with a clipless pedal setup, and a Brooks C17 Cambium, and that will be a pretty dang good distance riding machine. That'll be a lot of fun to ride pretty much out of the box because last I checked, you can do all of those upgrades that I mentioned on Wobby's website and it'll be around $1,200. For the same price, which wheel set do you think is a better value between the Esser Bolt 31 and the H Plus Sun archetypes on Grand Comps offered by Retrogression? First of all, I've never heard of the Esser Bolt 31s until you asked this question. And secondly, I looked at a review, a sponsored review that State did for their Esser wheels and here's what it said in it. Due in part to a lax installation on my end, and in part to factory problems at Esser USA, I managed to strip the lock ring threads early into my testing. State was extremely quick to address this problem and send me a new rear wheel to replace it, and I was actually assured that they had since changed their factory practices to ensure this wouldn't happen on future wheels. You can find out that review in the description. With those Esser wheels, it sounds like that messenger that State sent the wheels to had a lot of the similar problems that I've had when reviewing the bikes that State sent me, which, if I'm being honest, sounds like a lot of excuses for poor quality control. So why deal with having to contact State and to maybe get a high quality wheel when you could just always get a high quality wheel? H Plus Sun, super great wheels for the price. Grand Comp, super great hubs for the price. Built by Dave Scrot at Retrogression, who is a really good wheel builder. Get the archetypes laced to Grand Comps. They're hand built, they're like custom wheels and you get them for like 300 bucks. Like. No brainer. Can you bring back something like fixie points, but instead you critique and give advice on their builds? If you're not caught up, I decided to discontinue fixie points because it was just a bit too negative and it wasn't really sending the message that I wanted to, which is ride your bike no matter what anyone else thinks. And I think that critiquing people's bikes would just be imposing my bike ideals and judging other people, but just in a slightly more positive way. I still think that people should ride their bikes however they want. But with that said, there are some key things that you should get right, like fit. So maybe instead of critiquing, like saying, oh, I don't like your Omniums on a steel frame or whatever like that, we could do bike doctoring and see people can say that they have these mechanical problems or these problems with fit, and we could try to solve those in fixie points. Let me know your thoughts or other ideas on fixie points. I'm totally open to bringing back fixie points, just in a different, more positive and helpful way. And I am open to your ideas, so please do let me know in the comments. What do you need for night riding and what makes it different than day rides? Well, the difference is there's less traffic, there's less light, and because there's less light, it will be harder to see the road and road hazards. It's also cooler at night, and it's easier to see cars because you can see their headlights from a long distance. I actually really like night riding because of the fact that there's just a lot less cars and it's a lot more peaceful. And in the event that you do run into a car, you know where it is, you can see it from miles away. You don't really need a whole ton of gear to ride at night. The only essential things is that you have a front light and a rear light. Now it's good to have reflectors and reflective clothing, but it's not entirely essential as long as you have front and rear lights. My headlight is this Knight Rider Lumina 1100 Lumen. Honestly, this thing is way overkill unless you're like riding in the woods or out on a moonless night on some rural road. Because it's bright, that makes it a bit more expensive, and it's also really big, which takes up a lot of handlebar space. The taillight that I used that came in a combo with my headlight is the Knight Rider Solus 100. This light is good. I like this light. Both of these lights are USB rechargeable, weather sealed. It's all good. Now this specific combo, which honestly is kind of overkill, is like $100 to $120. So this taillight's still pretty good. It's like 40 bucks. Right now it's on sale on Amazon for around $25. If it's not on sale, you can check out the Knight Rider Cherry Bomb 35. There's like 50 reviews on Amazon with a 4.5 star rating. 
seems pretty good. And the Knight Rider 450 lumen headlight, whatever that one's called. You can check that out in the description at Amazon and it's around $23. Now, these lights are not the definitive lights. These are just the ones that I used. Knight Rider sent them over to me and I've had no reason to switch ever since they sent them to me. There's plenty of good light options out there. These are just the ones that I use. Just when you're looking for lights, look to spend around $50 for a combo. Weather sealing, USB rechargeability, and bright enough. Yo, I'm a broke 15 year old kid that needs little things done like switching my pedals and getting my bottom bracket adjusted, but the bike shop wants to charge me 10 to $15 but getting the tools is like double that. What do I do, Zach? First of all, 10 to $15 for pedal swapping and a bottom bracket adjustment is perfectly reasonable. Their business services cost money. A good place to access tools where you can just work on your bike or bike co-ops, if your town has one, they usually cost around $5 and you can use all the bike tools that you could ever possibly need. And you get access to a lot of helpful people that will give you the best practices and tips for maintaining and for installing stuff on your bike. Something else you can do is figure out a way to make money. Get a job, sell stuff, mow lawns, babysit, dog sit. There's lots of things a 15 year old teenager can do. And a more creative option that you could do is to ask a bike shop that you like to be their unpaid intern. And they'll most likely say yes, because that's free labor and why wouldn't they take that? And for you, you'll get to use their tools. You'll get to learn a lot about bike mechanics and cycling. You'll make bike friends. And if you do a really good job and if they like you, that unpaid internship that you created yourself could turn into a paid position. If you really wanna continue cycling as a hobby and as your passion, you will definitely find a way to do it. You have lots of options. Now, I have a question for you all. As we're coming into the season of pumpkin spice lattes and Ugg boots, what are some fall cycling videos that you would like to see me cover? Let me know in the comments and if it has enough support and if a lot of people like the idea, I'll make that video. Pixie famous shout outs to Michael Rector, Alistair McCullum, Mark Vandeventer, Matt Ford, Ozzy Verto, Connor Kerrigan, Merrick Dravecki, Robert Terpstra, Blue Tick, Hound, 16, Evil Ernie, and Jazeel for making these fixed gear videos possible through the support on Patreon. And if you hadn't ridden your bike yet today, stop watching me right now because life is short, but don't make it shorter. So be sure to ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.